So it's a beautiful day and I thought I would just take a walk around a little bit first and include this in my video that I'm going to record. I love this little spot right here. It's so neat. It's like a little circle that goes around. And I will show all of you why it is that I cannot get back to the tarp shelter. And then there's the fire pit. It's hard to believe we're seeing in times events unfold the way that we are. There's my other fire pit I made out back here. I have a video with my daughter and I in it out back. This is probably really shaky, I apologize. So, I'm gonna show you why I can't get back to the tarp shelter. Now, I haven't really scoped out stuff really super well, but see the farmer could come and spray the crop when I'm back there and I don't exactly wanna be back there when they're spraying Roundup. I don't think it would be very cool. Okay, so here you can see, I always hike way, way back there and then I turn and there's a whole nother section back there you can't see whenever I film. But there's the tower, the infamous tower that's in my opening that I'm standing on back when I looked like a twig because I was on that uh, candida diet thing, detox. So as you can see, it looks really beautiful Let's see if I can zoom in a little bit. So you can see way back there. So anyways, that's that. I don't think Farmer Brown would really appreciate me walking through his, well, it appears to be soy. But I'm not sure. I'm sure it's GMO soy, by the way. Let's see here. Look, you all can see one of the plants close up. Maybe some of you out there can determine what that is. Anyways, as I was saying, it's really, really hard to get back to the tarp shelter, but I have to admit, I really do miss the tarp shelter a lot. So it's just really hard to believe that here we are in these end times, seeing great things happen and just knowing that life as we've known it for so many years is about to change. It will never be the same. Really when it comes right down to it, it's the same for all of us. We are all in the same boat. Okay, so I'm not going to be able to stay in this spot too long because I am getting ate up by mosquitoes. I think they're having a wonderful, delightful dinner tonight. They're like, honey, we're having steak tonight. So let's all just focus on Jesus Christ as that is most important. 
and focus on our relationship with our Savior and draw close to him. Because if you really have that intimacy with him and that closeness with him that you are supposed to have as the bride, as his child, as his sister, as his brother, then you're not going to be as scared and you're going to feel secure in anything and everything that happens on this earth. You're just going to feel so secure. And the hardest part sometimes, the hardest part of forgiveness can be forgiving yourself when you have regrets. You know, you want to go back and do it over again. While we are in this mortal body, we can never go back and get time back. We're puppets. All right. If you are not born again, truly born again of Jesus Christ, you are a puppet and the enemy and his minions will use you. You know, like somebody with a little, remember the little puppets that um, have the strings, in, the marionettes. Okay. They will be like the puppet masters and that's what they do to these people. And it comes across as our own thoughts when we're under the influence of the demonic. It comes across as our own thought, our own feelings. They know how to get into our emotions. They get into us through our heart brain. That's your feelings, the seat of your emotion, the seat of your will, your desire, your passions, everything. All right. So they get in through there. So I'm going to relocate because I can even hear the mosquitoes buzzing. My arm is already like... I don't even know how many mosquito bites are on it. Hi, it's Lindley Oz. Welcome to another episode of Truth Hunters, because then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. Except tonight's going to be a little bit different. It's going to be more casual. And I also brought down some Canadian bacon and some potatoes. We're going to cook those and eat and drink coffee and just have a nice time together. I thought my pork lovers that I had who showered me with so much love last year when I cooked a pork product would really appreciate it. So it can give them something to do because they like to leave lovely comments. So now they'll have something to nitpick. So that's always nice. So anyways, we'll see where it goes. Maybe it'll just be lighthearted. We'll cook and eat and call it a night or maybe there'll be some discussion. I don't really know at this point. So I will be right back with you here in just a moment. Get your coffee, get all your goodies, and get ready. Because then you shall know the truth about cooking on a campfire. Okay. Okay, so now as you can see, I've got the rack closed, letting that heat up and get cleaned off. Although I did have it closed over the remainder of the fire. That's a can my son and I were shooting with guns. It was fun. And I need to take it out of the fire pit. It looks trashy. But anyhow, so I've got the rack closed. We're going to put the food on here shortly. Fire's nice and hot. Sorry, I don't have a type of a phone that you can feel it. You know, like there's the I smell, I wipe phones I've talked about before. Yeah. So this would be great to have an I eat phone. What about I heat? So you can feel the fire. I know I'm not that funny. All right, bad mom jokes. So as soon as that flame goes down a little bit, I'm gonna put the Canadian bacon and the potatoes on. I've already got them ready in the foil. Okay, I went ahead and I just sat it off to the side, but I went ahead and put the um, Canadian bacon and the potatoes, you can't see they're closed up in the foil but I went ahead and put them around the edges so they can just start to cook while it's still, you know, some daylight out. Not that it'll make a difference with this camera. In non-selfie mode, which is what I'm using right now, it has an awesome camera, but unfortunately when I'm filming and talking, I have to use uh, selfie mode so I can make sure it's still recording because sometimes I'll get phone calls or something will happen and it could stop and then I'll be filming and not have any idea. So, I wonder if that's, let's just check this out. Yeah. It's barely getting warm, so I think I'm safe to move it over just a little bit. All right. All right. We'll check back here in just a minute. May as well move the potatoes over to a little bit. 
there. So it's starting to cook up really nice. You can hear it sizzling. So we're just waiting. I just turned it. So I want to get a little bit brown. You got to get a little bit of burnt on it, you know, especially when you're cooking on a fire. It's that nice smoky taste. So it's nice. You got the barn door open over there today. I got my little outdoor candle thingy lit. You can see right there. That's what you always see flickering in the background. It's going to be good. Mm. Okay, the Canadian bacon starting to get some brown on it there, as you can see. I'm sure the potatoes are doing good, but it's looking good. We're going to be able to take it off soon and eat it. I'm sorry, I can't share any with you. If I could, I would, but it's looking good. All right, so I've opened up the potatoes. They are stuck to the foil. They have a little longer to go, as you can see. I'm hoping they'll both be done at the same time. I'm hoping they'll both be done at the same time, but they have a little ways to go. As you can tell. So the food's just about done, but I wanted to show you guys the sky. It is just absolutely beautiful. I mean, I've seen it more beautiful than this, but it's just absolutely pretty. And then I don't know if it'll show up on the camera, but nope. I don't know why the moon never shows up. Like when it's just a little sliver. But look at those pretty clouds. That sunset, absolutely beautiful. Oops, I went too fast. Look at that. The moon's right there, like a crescent in the sky. Oh, there it is. There you can see the moon. All right, back over to the food that's cooking. See my little bag over there, I had the food in. All right, I think it's pretty much done. So I'm probably going to go ahead and take it off and get it on a plate and then I'll be right back with you. Here's the sky once again. Nothing major like what I saw the other day. Oh my gosh, the other day it was absolutely gorgeous, but still beautiful. God's glory. There's some pretty pink ones over here. I didn't get these. Let's look at that. Isn't that pretty? Okay, so here is the finished product. You can see right there. The Canadian bacon, I already took a bite. But look at that. Mmm, those crispy potatoes, they're real crispy. This is nice, it's just perfect. Let me lay that down and turn this over so you can hopefully see. Nice, all I need now is to pour myself some coffee and eat. Okay, so I'm gonna pour some coffee and eat now. There's one thing, naturally I'm outdoors and I'm eating. So I may get food 
in my teeth or pepper on my lip or something. So, hey, that's the fun of eating outdoors by the campfire though. It's like, who cares? If I was doing a kitchen video, it'd be different. Just like I fixed my hair, like I fixed it today and it's already going curly because I don't have straight hair naturally. I have wavy and I would say in some spots, mildly curly hair. So I am gonna probably have to eat the Canadian bacon with my hands because it's too tough to really eat with a fork. But I am outside. It is really good. I didn't get it real crispy. I mean, I got it crispy enough on the outer edges. Then you can see. Really good. Fire's going nice. Oh. When I eat inside, I usually don't forget to pray. But when I'm filming, I forget. Hold on. Father God, in Jesus' name, thank you for this food. I ask that you bless it and let it be a blessing to my body. And thank you so much for the good food that you provide to eat. And thank you, Heavenly Father, for those who help to support what I do. And God bless them because of their support. I'm able to buy food to eat to cook on the campfire. So God bless all of those people who help support me and bless those who pray for me and pray for this ministry and just bless everybody no matter what they do. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. Okay, here we go. So, all right, so... These are Bob Evans seasoned potatoes. Groceries and food is through the roof right now. So I can't buy good stuff like organic things. Overall, cause it's just too expensive. So I'm not using my clip on mic. So I'm gonna have to jack the sound up. The clip on mic just didn't gonna work in this situation with all the eating. Somebody sent me a letter last year about swallowing problems and how to swallow right because I made a comment that I always cut myself out swallowing when I drink my coffee. It's not that I swallow loud, it's that clip on mic that I use, that particular one, and it's right here. And so it picks up the sound of me swallowing and it's really like weird sounding. So I always like cut the part out where I swallow. So how's your guys' weekend been so far? Mine's been okay. So last night I filmed, I still am not done editing that one. It was about the fear of the Lord. And I talked about the asteroid. So, can't figure out which one I'm going to upload first. I suppose that I should upload the one first that I've already worked halfway through. And then, I went to bed last night. And I woke up this morning at 5 a.m. I've never had this happen before. Ladies, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Men, you won't. I had pains like a woman in full-blown labor, and I'm not joking. And I'm not with anybody. I'm not doing anything. I'm not pregnant. I haven't been with anyone in a long time. Since my ex-husband. So anyhow... I don't know what the deal was. It was horrible. I was like uh, groaning. I couldn't get comfortable. I could sit, stand, 
lay down, nothing. And it was horrible. So I took a bunch of ibuprofen and then the only thing I could find on the internet, so I hardly slept last night because I was up late and then got up early. So the only thing I found was um, something about an ovarian cyst. The only thing I found here, let me move to the side. I think there's like a glow around the fire distorting me, was something about an ovarian cyst and that if one ruptures, that you have lower back pain and lower abdominal pain that is just horrendous. And that's exactly what I had. I even called my mother and I was talking to her, asking her what's wrong with me. I was actually really getting concerned. And then I messaged my friend Tamisha. I'm friends with her and her husband, Rudy, on Facebook. And they pray with me and watch my videos. Hi, Tamisha and Rudy. Hi, thanks for praying for me. So I messaged her and told her about it. And she was praying for me. She thought I meant I had leg cramps. I moved the camera a little bit. I don't know, I'm just looking into the camera and it looks weird right here. Something, I don't know if there's a smudge on it. Anyways, um, so anyway, she thought that I had leg cramps at first. I was like, no, no, other types of stuff. So I got really worried. So then I looked up online and all I could find was an ovarian cyst rupturing. So that's all I can make of it. And then it was gone a few, I took a bunch of ibuprofen, it went away and it hasn't come back. So that was fun. So then, I had to deal with some other garbage do with my checking account um and I felt really tired I laid down and fell asleep and then I woke up and I think I said no kitty to my cat multiple times he keeps getting on my dresser in my bedroom so he keeps getting in my bedroom on the dresser and he gets little trinket jewelry box things open i don't know how he's doing it because some of them fit kind of tight and then he brings down parts of it and throws it on me like if i'm asleep like the other day well a few nights ago a few nights ago i was laying there asleep and he kept tapping my foot and tapping my foot finally i woke up it was the middle of the night i'm like what and i had accidentally left the bedroom door open because i was sleeping on my it's like a um electric chase lounge or something i've had it for years so i wake up and then he looks at me and he has part of a jewelry box in his mouth and drops it on me and i'm like bad kitty <laughs> bad kitty and so i ran upstairs i'm thinking oh no he's gotten into my jewelry again so he wants to keep being bad He's like a little over a year old, so I think it's his age. But oh my gosh, it's like having a toddler. It really is. I should buy some ketchup down. I did get some organic ketchup a long time ago, and I haven't used it yet. Or no, it's not organic. Never mind. It's sugar-free. It was when I was doing that candida thing. So it would have been good though. I wonder when they say sugar-free ketchup because tomatoes naturally have sugar in them. So I wonder if it just means no added sugar. Well, they somehow scientifically extracted the sugar out of it. Hey, I'm going to have to like move the camera or something because I'm in some weird glow of the fire. I 
All right, well, it's a toss up now. I have some weird something going on here. Anyways, I suppose this is getting cold. I'm not chewy. Because it got cold, it's chewy now. Hey, we better learn to eat like this, except it ain't gonna be Bob Evans. It's actually fun to cook outside. The cleanup, mm, dragging everything back to them. Not so much, but you improvise. You have different little bags. Here comes motorcycles. Yay for the 20 millionth time today. So I just use like an insulated lunch sack that I have to put this stuff in to bring it down. That way it's easier to carry back upstairs. And then um, I have a knockoff of a name brand shoulder bag that I put all my other junk in. And then I have to carry the chair down and some old stool that was my mother's that I have a light on. I'd show it to you, but I don't like moving the camera. So, coffee's probably getting cold. I do love these cups, but they don't keep your coffee hot very long. Um, you wouldn't really think anything because as warm as it is out here, you wouldn't think it would go cold quick. But it does. I have low blood pressure, naturally. So, my doctor told me a long time ago, said, uh, I know this is going to sound really strange and it's not something a doctor normally tells a patient, but eat more salt. I do salt like, uh, Like, I'll, I'll salt steak a little bit or vegetables. I don't like a ton. I'm just not a big salt person. I don't know. I don't like that feeling it does to your lips when you eat, like, salty chips. Oh, by the way, last time I ate on camera, I was eating a sandwich. It was when the lockdown first happened. Well, no, I ate since then. I once had a turkey sandwich. And the other time I ate spinach or greens or something. And I was like talking with my mouth full and just being goofy and silly. Some woman writes me the longest email ever. Going on and on about how I have a, a perverted sex lust spirit. Because I ate on camera. And you can see the food in my mouth. And you can see the food in my mouth. Like I was being gross and obnoxious, like tomboyish. I don't see myself that way at all. I just don't. Definitely don't see myself that way. Oh. I remember people were freaking out my coffee time videos because you could see me from behind wearing camo pants. And they were real men's size small BDU army pants baggy and I thought it was a cool shot like I was standing from behind and the camera was positioned in a way but it was showed me standing there looking into the fire with my foot up I thought it looked cool I didn't think anything about looking sexy I don't know how to look sexy in BDU baggy military pants and combat boots but anyways so I just thought it was like a cool shot I had people complain. It's amazing. I do understand certain things. Like I do see videos of other people's. And I see their video covers. And pictures on Facebook. And there's stuff that just crosses the line sometimes. To be honest. Like people with their boobs hanging out. And, and shorty shorts. And just stuff like that that you see on the internet. 
cleavage. That's just inappropriate. I mean, if you're doing Christian videos, I find that inappropriate. Even if I had breast implants, I wouldn't show my boobs off to the world. I've lived this long with what I've got. I'm 48 years old. Hey, oh, may as well just keep what I got. But I just still wouldn't do that. I don't know. I'm weird. I just think it's inappropriate. And plus, I never liked it when I was married. If I was out and there was some woman showing the whole world everything she had, I didn't appreciate that. And the guy you're with is sitting there staring and then telling you he didn't even see what you're talking about. Yeah. <laughs> So yeah, I get accused of stuff all the time. I think people expect me to wear a burqa. So my food is almost gone. I'll probably add a little more wood to the fire. I miss my kids. My daughter's been on vacation with her aunt and cousins or something. I think just our aunt. And my son's been busy with all of his friends. My oldest daughter works. She graduated uh, school, college, last year. But she lives far away, like, well, not super far, but three hours away. And then, uh, my oldest son works all the time. So I, I really only get to see him on like holidays, birthdays, things like that. And that's pretty much it. All right. I told you that this would be a casual. I warned you. Well, maybe God will bring something up. Let's see where it goes. I'm going to add more wood to the fire and I'll be right back. So the creepiest thing. I forgot to tell you guys about. Um, last week, I don't remember exactly. <clears throat> oh, this past Sunday. I think it was this past Sunday. What's today? Yeah, it was this past Sunday. So I had rearranged my living room not too long ago to where my recliner chair that I mentioned earlier is on the opposite side of my living room, which you guys don't know what my living room looks like, so it doesn't matter, but straight across from me is my window, the side window that faces my side porch. I had it open. It was still daylight out. I think it was like 840, I want to say. And I saw, I was staring straight out the window. I had the blinds pulled up and I saw somebody, a solid human form or what I thought was human, walk past my window and go to my porch. Well, my front door, well, that side door has like frosted glass with speckledy stuff that you can see through. And whoever it was, was standing on my porch. I saw their shadow. I saw them walk across. I saw their shadow move to my front porch and they were standing there. And it's only a short distance. So I stood up. I thought, I wonder who's here. You had no idea. I wasn't expecting a package or anything. So I got up and no sooner than I got up, I walked to the door. There was nothing there. Now I can tell you this. It just disappeared. Like it didn't move away or run away. If it would have been a human and it would have taken off the way my house is, no matter which direction they went, they would have to run or walk quite a distance to where I would have seen them. And you can't get on my property without me seeing you. There's no way. So, I mean, my driveway is long, gravelly driveway. There's no sidewalks. 
So I have no idea what the heck it was. It was, a, I really feel like it was something demonic. It had a male presence to it. I don't know how to explain that. You ever drive down the street and you don't really see a person, but you could tell somebody's there. And if you were asked about it, you would describe it as, let's say a female. And if somebody were to say, well, what color hair do they have? I don't know. How long was their hair? I don't know. What were they wearing? I don't know. Were they fat, skinny, short? I don't know. But for whatever reason, it struck you as a female or it struck you as a male. So what I saw struck me as an adult. So what I saw it was solid. It was wearing something dark. Like it, it struck me as like either black or dark brown and as a male, but it wasn't human because it was only a matter of seconds and it just disappeared and vanished and there was nowhere it could have gone without me seeing somebody taking off. So it was really freaky. And the reason I remembered that was because when I just went into my basement and I have one of those old uh, basements that leaks and so forth and then it has this separate room. It's actually labeled the dungeon on the electric panel, the breaker box. I remember I was with the electrician and um, we were talking about how it looked like a dungeon and I was trying to find the switch for the little cubby hole room we were in. And we had just been talking about how it looked like a dungeon. And I said, wow, this must be it right here. It was actually labeled dungeon. So when I just went in to put the stuff that had food on it in the basement, because I don't want it out here around me because there's coyotes and wild animals around here. So when I went in to do that, I saw a shadow move up in the stairwell and there is nobody here except for me. And the door to the upstairs is closed. So it wasn't my cat, but I saw a shadow move. You never know, this is an old farmhouse in the country and the land that it's on. So this is really old back here. I think that, yeah, this whole area is really, really old. Like there were pioneers and stuff. Now I don't necessarily believe in ghosts. All right, I'm just gonna tell you that up front. I believe that there could be demons that were attached to people and they took on their image or whatever. There was one time a year ago, I was filming in the kitchen and I never uploaded it something happened and I couldn't film and it was only like five minutes and I may still have it. I don't know, but you can see what appears to be an orb behind me. It comes from the basement door and it lunges forward and it's up high, like close to the ceiling. And, um, and then it comes past again, but the next time it goes past, it goes right in front of my face and goes down. It was weird. I showed it to a few people and they said, I thought maybe it was like dust or something, but it wasn't. And before you tell me, oh, I need to go through and anoint everything and pray and do this and that I have. When I first moved in here, I was in my office and there's a bookshelf right outside the office door in the dining room and a book flew off the shelf. And then another time when I was uh, putting up all those metal signs in the kitchen that you see on the wall behind me. I went to go upstairs to get something and right on the landing, a few steps up was an adult sized shadow. And just as I went to go up the stairs, it like moved and it went real fast and it went into my son's bedroom. And at that point I played praise and worship music, rebuked, bound, binded, whatever and anointed everything with oil. So, I know this house sat for a really long time before I moved in. Probably because the basement gets wet, they put a sump pump in, but that really hasn't helped. 
So probably between that and I believe that some of the padding and the carpet in some of the rooms is bad because once in a while, particularly when it rains, it has like this smell like a dog or something. And I've had the carpet professionally cleaned. When I first moved in, I um, paid some professional people to come out and sanitize it and all of this and the smell doesn't go away. So that's probably why no one moved in, but I knew this is where the Lord wanted me. It, everything is very old. The kitchen, yeah, I did it retro, but the kitchen is very old, like 80s. The floor is that vinyl stuff that you roll out onto it is old. Very old house, but I love the house for the view and it's in the country other than cars going past constantly and motorcycles. But it's just a lot of land and I am blessed because the owner of the house allows me to go travel around on the land and do whatever. He knows I have a tarp shelter. It feels like a bug just flew on my eye. He knows I have a tarp shelter back there and a fire pit and he's okay with it and he lets me use it. Now, I could go back there now, but I, out of respect, I could go back there now, but out of respect, he share crops it with somebody. Oh, and it just so happens my mother knows the guy, his name's Wayne, but my mom knows him. And so does my friend Rob, whom I went to uh, school with, knows him and he's a Christian. So anyhow, but he share crops it and out of respect, I don't want to traipse through their stuff. And not only that, I don't know when they're going to come and spray Roundup on the field and I could be back there and I would just be stuck. Not to mention the tarp shelter, you go down into a valley area and the, um, the corn field, I guess I should call it a soy field or whatever it is, is up higher, but I would be like right there and that would not be good. So I never know when they're coming. They usually do it during the day. So anyhow, I like it out here and it's great for filming. It's scenic and you have privacy other than the cars going past. And if you need exercise, you can get out and take a, a hike and so forth. Now that sounds like a gunshot. That's very common around here. There's a house way across so the other part of the, the cornfield beyond the barn is also owned by the man that I rent from. So you go way far out and um, they have a lot of land over there. It's really nice. And they go out there and shoot. Yeah, that's what I'm talking about. So they go out, there it was again. They go out there and shoot. So it's very common around here to hear people firing guns which is kind of fun. My um, youngest son and I, we really like to get the um, CO2 guns out and just, uh, we'll stand up there on the deck and it's just fun. And we'll put, we put a can down here. My parents got me a Target for my birthday, but I haven't used it yet. But we put the Target, we would put the Target down here. That's where we had the can right there on that tree stump that I have by the fire pit where you see the candle. So we put the, um, the can on that and we were shooting at it. So that's always fun. You can't really do a lot of stuff like that when you live in the uh, suburban areas because your houses are real close to another house and people get more freaked out about things like that. But out here it's pretty common. Wow, that sounded like a cannon. In a video I did last year, I'm sitting there talking and there's a spider crawling on me. And as I'm editing my video, I'm thinking, uh, you know, I'm watching it crawl around and I never knew it was there. Let's go see what they're doing just for fun since we're just having fun anyways. Hold on. Let's see. So hopefully the little light comes on this. Let's go see what all this noise is about. It 
it's dark out here. But I just walked through a, do I see lights out there? I don't know what that was, but I just saw a light. Oh, it's probably a lightning bug. Hope there's no snakes in the grass right now. Well, I don't know where it's coming from. So I come all the way back here. Oh, there it is, fireworks. Let's see if we see any more, hold on. Sure is a pretty night out. Oh well, nothing overly exciting, just fireworks. So we will head back to the, uh, we'll head back to the uh, fire pit. Yeah, I'm going down the hill, see? Down the hill. Aw, oh, man, we missed the fireworks. Let's go back up. <laughs> this is fun. I hope you guys don't mind just having fun. Let's see if we can get a look. Now they'll stop again. That's always the way it works out. So let's see. Come on, we're going to wait as long as we can. Bugs landing on me. I have snakes out here too. One came up on my deck and I'm wearing gym shoes. Oh, there we go. Look at that. Well, we're getting some good action here. All right. Well, somebody's having fun. Okay. Now we will go back up or go back down, not up. We will go back down to the fire pit and enjoy the fire. At least we got to have some action-packed adventure. It was more fun thinking somebody was shooting a cannon off or a big gun. Let's see how the fire is doing. Oh, there's my lantern. I don't know what that is. Oh, I'm seeing a reflection. Oh, there's my bag I told you all about. See? The bag. Let's see what's in it. Mosquito repellent. Oh, they're doing more fireworks. Look at this. Check it out. I've never used these, but they're nice. And I've got little bug candles to go in my lantern. Nice. And I've got my silky gomboy saw. Yeah. Oh, and I got my knives. Let me show you. This is what I've used today, my optimal. That's what I used to open the wood, but I also have, this is one of my favorites, an SAK. Look at that, nice. Put those back in there, don't lose them. If I leave stuff out, you end up losing it. Oh, a whistle and a compass, in case any Coyotes come out here, nothing in there. Yep, so there's that. Okay, so I'm gonna set everything back up and we'll talk some more. Well, that was kind of fun. You know, just seeing what that was. It was fun. Excuse me. Now my coffee's cold. It was a pot I already made in the house and I had a cup out of it earlier and I just kept it hot and put it in the thermos. So there wasn't as much. And I don't even drink all of it when I'm out here. I let it sit because I'm talking. And then it goes cold. And then I do this number. <laughs> and toss it and waste it. So.
So anyways, what to expect here in a few weeks? Everybody's saying something is getting ready to happen by September. Pastor Dana said it, by the way. <clears throat> Pastor Dana gave a word and I really believe it and especially all the more because the NAR people are poo-pooing all that he said. The NAR people are saying, we will have peace. Trump. Oh, wow, that firework was real pretty. I wish I would have gotten that one on camera. Looks like a big flower. So, um, wow, is it the grand finale? So anyways, Pastor Dana is being poo-pooed by the NAR. And then there was the word from Byron Cyril. And then of course, uh, Stephen Ben Danoon and his wife, they're saying an asteroid is coming. I shared my thoughts on the asteroid in the video I recorded last night. Oh, and guess what? Guess who else told us? You will never believe who else told us that something is getting ready to happen very soon. Seriously. And this, this person is the absolute most trusted person on the face of the earth and then some. Jesus Christ, he told us many signs to watch for that the time of the end was here. So I'm looking at myself in the viewfinder and I look really weird. It's amazing what firelight and lanterns do for your face. It makes you look beautiful. Reminds me of those old cat eye eyeglasses they had back in the 60s or something. Anyways, stuff's gonna happen. Seems everybody's dreaming dreams and hearing from God and there's some weird bug walking around on the stool that I have my lantern on. I don't know what it is. Looks like an ant. Huh. Anyways, people are dreaming dreams, hearing from God. People are seeing demons walking around on their property, Marty Breeden saw one. And then I told Marty Breeden shortly after I saw it out of my window. And he said that somebody he knows or a family member, I can't remember, who never saw stuff like that had also seen one that very same day on their property. So all I can say is we all best be praying every single solitary day for God to just totally protect our property and have angels at all four corners of our property. I think I'm about to run out of fuel in my lantern down here soon. I have an extra thing of it in the basement on top of a refrigerator. Oh yeah, it's going out. I can tell. I don't know if I want to, you guys just might have to see the rest of the video kind of with me in the dark a little bit because I don't know, I'm so close to being done that I don't know that I feel like going through all the trouble. Or I can just bring my other lantern that the ant is crawling in circles around on over here. Yeah, that thing is going out, hold on just a minute. You will see if that works. Well, it's a different kind of light. Hold on. Not so much. Hold on a minute. Let's see if that helps. It's kind of weird. That's real weird. Whoa. <laughs> booga, booga, booga. Anybody see any demons on your property? Monsters, ghosts. What is getting ready to happen? Booga, booga, booga. The COVID monster. That's just creepy. 
Let's try that. Is this good? I don't know. Hold on. All right, so anyways, what are you all gonna do? What's your plan? Like, do you guys have a plan about what you're gonna do? Um, if all these things people are saying happen to come true, what is your plan? Because you can't just sit around and just expect that, well, you know, I'll just be okay. Okay, you have faith in the Lord and you trust him, but at the same time, you should be stocked up. Oh, by the way, I'm, I always forget to mention it. You can visit Prepare with Lynn, and that is Lynn with one N, preparewithlynn.com, and check out the survival food that uh, that is there. And you can help support me too by doing that. That is a sponsor. So I always forget to mention that in my videos because I'm thinking more about the message, you know? I don't like to bog everybody down with uh, advertisements and stuff like that. But you know what? When all your videos are demonetized, you've got to do what you have to do. You can ask anybody who does what I do. This is so time consuming. If I had some other job, I would hardly have time to upload as many videos as what I do. Like it would be a rare thing. And it's a full-time ministry and I love blessing and honoring the Lord and doing stuff for him. And one of the logs just fell over. Huh. So anyways, we were talking about, do you guys have a plan or know what you're going to do? Because I don't know, in my opinion, with everything we see happening and as many people as are saying something's going to happen and they're all giving, you know, the same general time frame. Now, as I said in my last video, here's what I see happening. I don't see an asteroid just yet. If I use the book of Revelation and the Bible as our map or our timeline, I don't see that yet. I think that there's just going to be some, <clears throat> I personally think there's going to be another shutdown and that it's going to be much worse and there's going to be major catastrophic civil unrest and prices are going to get jacked up so bad that people won't be able to afford to buy food and everybody's going to go nuts. And then they're going to enforce this immunization for the virus. And yeah. And you're not going to be able to buy anything or do anything without proving you've had this immunization. So it's going to be really, really bad. And my description of it just sitting here does not even come close to as bad is what I think it's going to be. So bad, like capital B, capital A, capital D is in bad. So that's what I think is going to happen. And I don't think we're ready for the asteroid event yet. I do not see an ELE event. If an asteroid comes close to the earth, I take it as a warning from God to get your butts ready and repent and prepare because there will come something like that in the near future, one that will do a lot of damage. So I do see that um, an asteroid could hit the earth. I just don't think it's going to be like some major catastrophic ELE event just yet. I really, really don't. I think it's going, if it does hit, I think it'll hit somewhere remote or it could do damage to a city or something like that, but I just don't see it being an ELE event. And as I stated in my last video, I am in no way calling anybody out or calling anyone a liar. We all have our opinions or what we feel 
led in our hearts. And that's just how I feel by what I see in the Bible, you know, in Bible prophecy. That's what I see. That's what I feel. I could be wrong on that because it wasn't a thus saith the Lord. God didn't wake me up in the middle of the night and tell me this is what I see in the Bible. So do keep in mind, eventually there is coming an asteroid of epic proportions, just like is being uh, discussed right now. I keep talking about repentance to people and I keep talking about fearing the Lord and I keep quoting Jesus's own words and I keep reading and sharing Bible passages, like just straight out of the Bible and speaking the truth and there's so many people who reject it it's just well it's just exactly what jesus said would happen he talked about that he talked about a man's enemies being those of his own household meaning the church and also in the book of peter it talks about they came from us but they were not of us Jesus warned about people being deceived. And that's exactly what we're seeing. And yeah, I sound like a broken record, constantly talking about deception and deception and deception and apostates, but I'm sure Jesus sound like a broken record too when he was telling the disciples over and over. They're probably like, yeah, we heard this already, we know. Well, he was sharing that not just for them, he was sharing that over and over for us today. So that's really important to remember. See, there's a little bit of coffee left. I feel like I'm gonna sneeze. Here it comes, oh no. <laughs> I'm gonna be very shocked if it's just one. I think it's just one. Usually when I sneeze, it's three. Okay. There's a little dribble of coffee left. Oh, if I try to show you, it'll dump out and that's all I have left. So let's see. We're seeing in other countries starvation because of the virus. We're seeing mass chaos and rebellion all over the place, that Antifa stuff and all that. I can't drive anywhere without seeing Black Lives Matters. There's like a couple of them right up the street, signs, Black Lives Matters. I wanna replace it with all lives matter. All lives matter, it doesn't matter what color you are. I don't see color. I mean, unless I'm trying to describe someone to someone else for some reason, I don't sit there and think about that. All lives matter, let's quit calling it black, white, Chinese, Hispanic, whatever. We're all humans. It doesn't matter. Heck, I used to get so tan years ago that my children told me that when they were real little, they told me they thought that I was mixed because I was so dark. They would tell people they had a white dad and a black mom, it was funny. But all lives matter. But we're seeing that gross abortion laws. There's a really bad one in New Zealand just all over the world just increase in sin and rebellion and lawlessness jesus talked about lawlessness he talked about lawlessness in the church lawlessness in the world and apostasy is rebellion so he told us all these things strange weather patterns increase in earthquakes there's been tsunamis that you guys know about none that i'm aware of recently um plagues, viruses. I'm trying to think of what else. Just all sorts of crazy stuff. Everything the Bible talks about. And he said, after the apostasy or the falling away, then we would see the other stuff. Then the end would be here. So the falling away is not a recent thing. It's gotten worse. But that's been going on for some time now. I'm telling you, I don't understand how some people can still be asleep and have their eyes closed, their conscience seared with a hot iron.
I guess this video has gotten long. I mainly wanted to come out here tonight just to do some cooking and just casual light conversation and stuff like that. Nothing intense or serious. I didn't have anything planned per se, but I thought it would be fun to cook. I haven't cooked on camera in a long time. Just something simple, you know, the Canadian bacon and potatoes and have some coffee and just enjoy the fire with you guys instead of just sitting here by myself. So I thought that would be fun. It's more fun to film out here than it is just to sit out here alone. It just feels really alone when I'm alone. I tried to do that, I think it was last week. I made a fire in my little homemade fire pit in the back there by where you saw the fireworks going off. And the cornless cornfield just, it gave me that feeling like you're on a beach just looking out into the open. And I was out there for a little while. I thought I'd go out there and pray and read the word by the fire. And I did for a little bit. And then I just got kind of bored by myself and put the fire out and went in. So it's more fun being out here when I get to hang out with you guys by the fire. That's always nice. But listen, I just can't keep stressing enough to tell you guys to really, really take time out every day. I don't care if you have to stay up just an extra 20 minutes. Okay, take extra time out to spend time in God's word. And if you have trouble falling asleep, sit up at a table, like go to your kitchen table or something. That's what I've had to do sometimes. The devil wants you to fall asleep when you're trying to read the word. So just spend more time in God's word and pray before you start reading Pray for his guidance, his direction. Pray for the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. And then make sure you spend extra time praying and worshiping him. This is really important. I cannot stress it to you enough. I do not advise that you just sit down and read the word without praying first, especially if you have been part of the apostasy and you've heard false teachings because when you read, they have manipulated and twisted scriptures to conform to what they want. And so that's a big problem. Okay. So when you read the scriptures and you don't pray first, what you're reading could be altered in your mind by the false teachings that you have been taught. So I just want to be perfectly clear on that. So let's go ahead and say a word of prayer. And again, I know this hasn't been some awesome earth shaking video. My whole plan originally was just to cook and eat and talk for a little bit and then end the end of the recording. So just a lighthearted type of a thing. We need that sometimes, you know, we all do. And I wanted to see if the Lord maybe had anything to say and all I really feel led tonight in this recording is to remind you all to really prayerfully get into his word and spend more time with the Lord. Time is so short, my friends. It is really, really short. We are possibly only weeks away, weeks from something so horrible that none of us can imagine. I don't know exactly what day it was, but I know it was recently Within the last week or so, uh, California went on lockdown again. They've now made it mandatory in my state that you have to wear masks wherever you go. In certain counties, like the one I live in, you didn't have to. But now they've made it to where you do have to everywhere. So it's going to get worse and worse. It feels like we live in a concentration camp or something or communism that's what it's starting to feel like but it's okay you know what thank god and praise the lord our citizenship is not of this nasty corrupt world spend your energy and your time fighting for the kingdom of heaven on this earth by praying using the word of god praising, worshiping, spending time with the Lord. That's how we fight. Ephesians 6, 10 through 20. Spend your time and your energy. You know what? If every person who said they're Christian spent more time praying for 
the government, praying for the people in this nation, praying for the people in other nations and other parts of the world and sisters and brothers and enemies and unrepentant and children and all those things as opposed to arguing, bickering, fighting over trivial things or fighting physically how we are not supposed to fight for things. If more people spent more time doing it God's way as is outlined clearly in the Bible, we would really see mountains moved. If every person that called themselves a Christian spent more time truly repenting for sin And truly following in the footsteps of Jesus Christ, wow, 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 is all I can say, really. So think on that. Every day when you wake up, the first thing you say is, praise you, Lord Jesus, good morning, and say a prayer, and think on the things of God's word. And really tell yourself, I'm going to impress Jesus today. What can I do to impress the Lord? What can I do to make Father God happy? What can I do to make uh, the groom Jesus happy? What can I do to please the Lord today? What can I do? Ask yourself that question every day. And take time out each day to write a couple goals down on a notebook or a piece of scrap paper or something. Write some goals down of what you want to do the next day or maybe write it down for the whole week. Just different things you can do that would honor and bless the Lord and would make him happy. I think that's an awesome idea. Anyways, let's go ahead and pray. Father God, in Jesus name, thank you for this time together. Thank you for this day. Thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you for your Holy Spirit that ministers to us, leads us, guides us, directs us. Bless you, Lord. Bless you and thank you for the food that we eat and that we wake up every day with another chance, with breath in our lungs and a beat to our heart and that you allow us to continue living each and every day. Many of us don't even think about that, that the only reason we wake up every day with a beat to our heart and air in our lungs is because you have allowed us to. So we thank you for that. And Father, you are so awesome. You are so mighty. You are so great. And we just want to tell you how much we appreciate you and love you. And just like Job said, when all these bad things happened, Job said to his wife, he said, well, you know, God blesses us. And we've taken his blessings and thanked him for it. So we also have to take him and bless him and praise him and the other things too that aren't so good, you know, and the bad things that happen. Well, help us to be more like that Heavenly Father and to just give you thanks for everything. We don't always understand why we don't have all the answers. There are reasons why you do things that you do or why certain things happen and You know, you're moving around behind the scenes, doing things that we may not fully understand. So we just trust you and love you and thank you and praise you. And we adore you. And I just thank you and praise you that as all these things happen on this earth, that you're going to reveal yourself in mighty, mighty ways to your people. And your people are going to draw so close to you, Father. We're going to need miracles. And you're going to give us miracles, Father. We aren't going to be able to go to a doctor or a dentist. So you're going to give us the miracles. You'll be our doctor and our dentist. We may not be able to purchase food. Some of us may not have the means to stock up. Some of us may not be fully prepared. But you will provide for us, Heavenly Father, in Jesus' mighty name. You will provide for us as long as you want us here on this earth. My Lord, you will provide. You will take care of us. You will supply everything that we need in Jesus' mighty name. Lord, I also pray against fear. And I ask you, Lord, that Lord Jesus, that you go out and send your Holy Spirit out to every single person that is struggling with fear. And I ask that you replace that with peace and joy and just a a sense of calm, Heavenly Father, and 
just outright faith in you, Father, just strong, powerful faith in you. Just thank you and praise you, Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, amen and amen. All right, God bless all of you. Thank you for joining me. And don't forget, if you are not subscribed here on YouTube, to subscribe, check your subscription. Make sure you're still subscribed. People have to do it every day sometimes. Um, also, download the free app for the free show on Truth Hunters. And that is a free app for any Apple or Android device, Apple TV, Amazon Fire, Roku. Again, the show is free. It's not free for me, however, and it's not cheap. But I don't know how long that we will be able to have our videos here on YouTube. So the Lord moved me to do that. So I'm doing it in faith every month I pay. So if you feel led or moved to sow a gift into the Lindley Oz ministry, you can do so via my PayPal or I have a P.O. box. You can send a check or money order. The information is scrolling across the bottom of the screen. And it's also in the video description right beneath this video here on YouTube. If you feel led to do that, please do. And to all of you, I would ask you to help me fight this horrid censorship by sharing the videos. It's real simple. Share it on Facebook, share it in Facebook groups, Twitter, Google, Yahoo, social media, whatever. Help me out by sharing these videos. That would just be awesome. Also continue praying for me, my family, this ministry. Pray for our sisters and brothers. Pray for the lost, the unrepentant, the apostates. Pray for our enemies. Pray for our government and its leaders. Pray for infants and children and the unborn. Pray, 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 pray in Jesus' name. Thank you so much. God bless all of you. And don't forget, spend time in God's word prayerfully and spend time in prayer and praise and worship because then you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free. God bless you and goodbye. Until next time, be abundantly blessed.